it's Brian Johnson and in this video we're gonna talk about how you can really ensure that you're creating search engine friendly content that's gonna help drive more traffic to your website get you better results and really it's it, it's so simple by following this a bit of guidance to to move forward so first of all let's talk about this uh, list of items I have here okay I'm gonna grab my little pen number one it's really important to try to reduce the amount of duplicate content that's posted to your website and unfortunately if you don't know that that can be an issue which it can in fact you can go ahead and you know search Google uh, for duplicate content and you'll find that it's really frowned upon and Google doesn't want to find duplicate content. Now most people think of duplicate content is an issue. If you were to buy maybe some private label rates content, some articles that any other person could buy and you posted them to your website and they'd already been posted uh, previously. Now that would definitely be an issue. But what happens if you logged into your website and let's go ahead, here I am, I'm in the dashboard of the, the website I'm uh, building in real time and really showing you step by step exactly how to optimize your website for the search engines when launching a new site. Let's say that I created this awesome article here, I've got some images, I've got uh, lots of unique content that's never been posted before. I've embedded an HTML5 video so it can be played on uh, iPads and whatnot. I've got this great content, but what if I went ahead and I posted it to multiple categories? Well, really what I'm doing is I'm adding the same exact content to different pages within my website. And that's another form of duplicate content. So we've got duplicate content that is across the web where the same content can be followed on multiple domains. And we have duplicate content that can be found on multiple pages within a single domain. And that's a no-no, we don't wanna do that. So you can see here, this article that I posted has only been posted to one category. I'll also mention if we scroll down here, I don't have any tags. Now, tags are all the rage, <clears throat> I get it. Tags are, are used by a lot of sites, but in fact, really what you're doing when you're creating tags, it's, just, it's, it's another form of categorizing your content, and it can be another way for Google to find the same content across your website. Let me show you yet another example of how that can happen. Let's go into appearance, and then to widgets, and let's scroll to widgets, if we look at our sidebar, let's say we were to pull in archives. Now, what is archives? Archives is yet another way to categorize the content that's found on your website. So if we were to <clears throat> list out uh, archives, here you can see in the sidebar, I've only got categories. I'm not showing an, an archive tag cloud because honestly I feel categories are much easier for uh, humans to navigate and see maybe I'll have you know eight or six or seven categories not a ton it's easy to view and this is a link to a particular page on my website right you can see here's the category the category is building a home and this is a little snippet of content now what happens when I add the the widget archives, just move this back up here. Well, when I add the, uh, the tag archives and I save that and I come back here, now notice I've got another link to this and the same content is gonna show up. Let's check this out and see what it looks like. Well, look at there's another snippet, the same exact content and it's already featured on my permalink page the same content right there. So that's why I really don't like to use archives. I only use categories, I don't use tags, and anytime I post content uh, to my site, I'm only gonna select one category, and again, I'm not gonna use tags, and this is a really smart way 
to ensure that your website is search engine friendly. So the moral of the story, my friends, is to reduce the duplicate content on your site. And you can follow those simple steps that I just showed you. The key, one category, no tags, and you're golden. Now, when you build out a website, it's abs absolutely vital to really create high-level content that adds value. You know, anytime you're publishing to the web, think to yourself, well, how can I create some content that's really awesome that people are going to enjoy? Think about the things that you do in your life day to day that other people might be interested in, right? And these are the kind of things that you can do. I want to show you what I'm doing with this site. This is a great example. My wife and I are going to be building a new home and instead of like just going into a niche market based on oh looks like lots of people are buying or there's high EPCs or there's high AdSense earnings per click why not take a look at what you're doing day to day and say you know are there other people on this planet specifically searching the web that are looking for great content based on this subject and if you've got knowledge in that subject why not go ahead and create a website based on that very thing. So here, you know, my, my wife wrote up this nice article. I've included some, some great images. I've included uh, some videos. You can see here, this is a video I took with my iPhone. Doesn't have to be super high tech, but the end result is really great content that adds value. When you do that, when you add value, you're going to get really great re, uh, results. Now, another thing you're going to want to do is think about the words and phrases that people are searching for when after you've posted the content. So, you know, what I did is I created that blog post first. I told the story of us, uh, how we came to think about building in a particular area, how we selected the lot. And after I was done crafting that post, I said to myself, well, self, what are the kind of words and phrases that people might search for to find this kind of information? And then I included those phrases when I uh, SEO'd my post. And this is really where we're getting deep into how to um, optimize your content for the search engines. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to do that with the Yoast SEO plugin. And then yet again, I'm going to show even how you can take it to the next step and how you can optimize your content by using the Yoast SEO video sitemap plugin, okay? Now, one of the things we're gonna uh, talk about again in yet another upcoming um, video is how to make your web pages on your WordPress website load a lot faster. That's something that visitors want. Who likes to sit at a web page that takes you know, 20, 30 seconds to load? If it doesn't load for me in 20 seconds, I've left and I bet you're the same. Now, there are a few plugins we can implement. We can basically flip on. There's a few simple changes we can take. And in fact, I'm gonna walk you through how five minutes of your time can reduce your site load time by about 50 percent pretty awesome and that will be in a, again in an yet another uh tutorial so you know decreasing how load long your site takes to load can really help with creating search engine friendly content we another thing you're going to want to do is to use search engine friendly urls by implementing permalinks and selecting post name what does that look like well it looks like this you're going to go to settings you're going to go to permalinks and you're simply going to select post name and you're going to click save changes. Now, when you do that, you're going to be left with a, a URL structure or a permalink that's based on keywords, right? So you can see here, this is the, the address of this content, building a custom home with uh, hyphens. And it's very, very friendly. If you don't turn the, that on, you're permalink structure looks like something like this. It's, uh, I believe it's like a question mark equals P3 47 or something. There's no keywords and even worse, anytime you see a question mark in a URL, that's a sign of dynamic content in the search engines. While they are very good at indexing dynamic content, it's not as friendly as, uh, 
this type of a structure that I just showed you, where the URLs are based on keywords, like we're seeing right here, build a custom home. That's a keyword driven URL. It's very friendly, but at the same time, this is not a spam document. I'm not abusing anything. In fact, I'm, I'm linking out a lot to some amazing website resources. Here you can see I'm linking to the community we're going to uh, move in, right? I'm linking to Garden, in the God, Garden of the Gods, which is basically right behind our home. And I'm linking out because I'm trying to make a great resource for my visitors. I, I'm taking their needs first. I'm not thinking about how I'm going to make money or, or how I'm going to fool the search engines. Instead, I'm trying to great, create a great website. So that's another tip is to, you know, create great content, like I said, use those search engine friendly uh, URLs by implementing permalinks and selecting post name. And lastly, like I said, link out to rele relevant websites based on the content you're creating uh, content about and Google will reward you and your visitors will love your website and they'll come back. Now in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to use the Yoast SEO plugin and I'm going to go through and really talk about how to create that search engine friendly content. That's video 11. We'll see you next, guys. In that video, I should say. Brian Johnson, out.